So I just want to start off by saying that this is probably the healthiest that we've been in a while. I know you're on a health kick or whatever, but like usually when we meet, we kind of break the rules. Well, I was so happy when I saw like all fresh stuff, like cucumber. No, there's no cucumber. What am I talking about? But tomatoes, broccoli, watermelon. I'm like, yes. And then all of a sudden, I go to the bathroom or something and come back and there's pita chips on the table. <laughs> and that's all thanks to our special guest today, Ivana. Ivana, say hi. Hey, everyone. I'm back. She's back. <laughs> and I'm here to finally be a part of this this time. <laughs> I know. Ivana's so excited about this. Let's just say I brought all these snacks because I wanted everyone to be fed and excited for this oh, podcast. Oh, I like it. I like it. Thank you. Although I did start the morning off with some McDonald's breakfast, but... What did you have? I had two Egg McMuffins. Two? Yeah. You gotta do... It was two for five. I had a you coupon. Two? Yeah. Oh, they're judging. To be honest, The look I, on their faces. Um, I went to McDonald's because I wanted a hash brown. But you did get a, a sandwich. I did because I also wanted a sandwich. Yeah. But the thing is, is that Katie in this scenario had like one of the healthiest breakfasts I've ever seen. And I do want to try to copy it. I don't know if it would be as good. We had a master chef. A master in the house. chef at I like am. I'm so a, early I'm in the so morning. I'm so good at cooking. But like literally Saturday morning, so early, and you're already up and you're getting ready while you're also cooking an avocado egg. Okay, Wait, so explain like, this, explain this. Cooked. It was a baked avocado egg. Baked. Okay, it's there baked. we go. Okay, so this is how you do it. You make sure that your avocado is ripe, not firm, not mushy, nice and ripe, okay? You cut the avocado, and then when you open it, there's the pit, and the other side has the hole. So I use the side that doesn't have the pit, and then I take a little bit more out of it, eat the avocado off the spoon, crack an egg in the hole, uh, some yolk did not I said yolk when I was telling you before egg white comes out anyways that's fine salt and pepper pop it in the oven 425 for like 15 to 17 minutes take it out bit more salt and pepper <laughs> and there you go you can add feta tomato salsa master chefery right here. literally this is now like a cooking podcast <laughs> <laughs> we just talk about food no let, what, what do you want to talk about what we're going to talk about today yeah, so we are talking about social media today, but focusing more on the anxious side of it that people can feel and mm -hmm. kind of how some people will choose to deactivate all their yeah. accounts, um, maybe with the intention of it being permanently or just temporarily and kind of different popular reasons why. And like also being away from your phone and how that can cause people anxiety. Absolutely. So kind of just like the things that we go through um, in terms of being connected at all times or choosing not to be. And I guess some personal anecdotes from Miss Ivana as well. So let's and kick this off. We're also going to talk about how at Instagram, how there's so many people on there that are putting on this image that isn't them and how there's actually a subreddit now that calls them out on it. Hashtag Instagram reality. So we're going to talk about that too. Wow, I said that. I was like, bleh, bleh. <laughs> <laughs> No, I liked it. Hashtag Instagram reality. There you go. That was less <laughs> blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's just mushing at this point. Okay, so I'll start. As someone that has, I guess, most social media platforms, I have a Snapchat. I don't use that. But um, an Instagram and a Twitter and a Facebook. I have never... Okay, La Ryan, a few weeks ago we were talking and I said I was going to deactivate some of them. But almost for just kind of like testing how it would make me feel. Like, mm. would, would I miss it? Yeah. Whereas some people are like, you know, going through a breakup and they can't, you know, even bear to see any posts from an ex or posts about an ex or, you yeah. know, group photos. Whereas other people are just like so disinterested at this point because there's been so much saturation of social media over the years that they just kind of think, screw it. Yeah. And they d uh, delete it. But for me, like, I've never really given it too much thought of wanting to delete them because I'm not overly on any of them anyways. You know what I mean? I, I could take it or I could leave it. I like being able to have like an Instagram feed if I want to like look up workouts or just I'm bored. Interesting. But I could leave it as well. So I've never really felt that anxious side of it. But I can say in terms of like boyfriends and stuff, if you, ha if you break up, like are, have they unfollowed me? Have they deleted photos of me? Yeah. That, that I can understand. What about you guys? So I would say for sure, 
there's not a lot of people like you in general. And when it comes to <laughs> in more ways media, than one, <laughs> um, that's why we love her. When it comes to social media, especially with this generation, it's it's taken over people's lives. Yeah. And I think now more than ever, it's so ingrained in you know the human psyche to know what is going on. Sorry, do, do, I was do, do, just, do, 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 do. just thinking I've got to put this on silent. No way. I was doing my hair. I was like, I think my phone's on silent. That's happened to me a bunch where you think of something and then all of a sudden it happens. Like I all the time on shuffle, like I'll click shuffle and I'll be like, I hope that it's this song. And then that song will start playing. Okay, but also I don't understand. This, this is fine because we're in a home. I don't understand when you go to an event, okay, yeah. the f- common courtesy, turn your phone off and or like at least event, silence it silence at least it something yeah, yeah and then you always hear do 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 <laughs> do and then you just think oh my god what were you thinking it's a silent event a silent event i would not last at that but um laugh attack laugh attack oh my god but you know what kills me i don't go to the movies often actually the last time i went to the movies was with you rye but like (laughs) and did you have fun yeah, it was a good time. It was your birthday, of course. Yeah, and we watched a scary movie. It was a stupid movie. Oh! Facts. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was so bad. But anyways, you were saying, like, um, you know, turn your phone off. And Ryan was saying, like, silent mode. Like, yeah. you know, a way to make sure that it's not going to ring. That's what I think most people do now. Like, if I go to the movies, I'm not turning it off. No. But what kills me is when you see people, like, in a dark movie theater, yes. they've got to check it. Like, unless you've got a little baby at home and yeah. you're just making sure the babysitter hasn't called. Yeah. Or, like, there is a serious thing going on, but probably there isn't. Or you yeah. wouldn't be at the movie theater. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you're telling me you millennial or you like older person that finally has a good new iPhone or whatever that you can't watch one movie in a theater without checking your phone. Like that to me is crazy. What's even crazier is going to a silent event, but I won't harp on that. Okay. I don't know where I was going with the silent event. <laughs> so, no, I get what you mean. It's like a talk or something. Like someone's yeah, doing just, a talk. I mean, okay. Talkers. So it's just like, <laughs> Okay, a semi-silent event. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I don't even know where this is going anymore, ladies and gentlemen. And everyone in between. Okay. All right. So, Ivana, when we were talking before, um, you are an artist, and I think um all of our listeners know that. With social media and having many different platforms of it. We are bringing you to Ivana and your personal stories with this. You have recently, or in the summer, you've gone on a social media cleanse, but you still have one account. So kind of talk about that and talk us through it. But it's a professional account. That's the yeah. thing. So I guess it's it's cheating in a sense of I still have the app on my phone. Yeah. But I have deact- I've been deactivated on my Instagram since July. My personal Instagram. The only account that I have left is my art account. But yeah. that's also because I'm going to places. I'm doing events. I'm actually going to New York next weekend. So I still need to have something for people to know. Hey, you know, this is a person. She exists and she's trying to get her name out there but i strategically don't follow anyone on it and like it's, your social circle you mean you don't follow i don't follow anyone oh that's zero right zero following which kind of bothers me by the way cause listen i have another side account that when people want to follow for follow i'll follow them she on did. that account she followed me on that but it's like and i gotta support her art so i follow it but she follows zero <laughs> zero people including not following me okay hold on before we continue with this i have to ask is that actually a thing, a follow for a follow? Yes. So someone will add you and say, I will follow you to yep. up your following account. Yeah, count. I see it. See, that I'll is why. I'll follow you back. That is why, just quickly, I've never been really into social media because that's just so Freeze. not who I am. And I know that's how you, you know, become an influencer and you gain those massive followers and all of that stuff. And I'm not criticizing people like that. That's just a way of handling a certain almost business or however. But for me, maybe it's, I don't have the hustle, but I couldn't imagine setting up an account and like messaging all these people for, yeah, I don't know. Just wow. That's all I have to say. (laughs) So listen, follow for follow. I'll give you guys a bit of a historical context 
way back when Instagram first started. Um, I've been on Instagram since 2010, so it's been nine years. Wow. And for me, I remember uh, how much it evolved. And follow for follow was a hashtag that yeah. people would use. F for F as yeah. well. Yeah, they would, they would use that mm-hmm. to, to gain followers, yeah. right? And so for me, the way I look at follow for follow is a very archaic way of just gaining followers. No, I agree with that, yes. You know? But I do feel as though if you are... Um, if you're friends with someone and they're in your social <laughs> circle, you should follow them. Look at they're, they're both looking and judging me. I but I no get it, comment. I'm just I repeat, no <laughs> comment. <laughs> but yours is the art account. Ryan, so I get you're it. lovely. I follow you. I'd follow you a million times more if I could. <laughs> but if Ivana doesn't follow anyone, no, I, I don't think she's making the one exception for <laughs> Ryan Durgy. You know it might be like her favorite artist <laughs> in the so. world, but. Ryan Durgy's her only. (laughs) Like, what? Okay, I'll tell you why I did it. Because I wanted to test something out. I wanted to see what Instagram would be like if I was not following anyone. And I'll tell you something. Well, you just ended up seeing yourself, your own post. It's it's fantastic. I have nothing in my feed to distract me. I don't have some Instagram uh, influencer posting about her trip to Cabo. I don't have, you know, I, I have nothing to distract me. And it's actually nice to just see how my posts flow into one another. Okay, well, when you are, and okay, that's interesting. I never thought about it like that. When you're on a break at work and you're on your phone, what are you doing? Like, because I uh, love scrolling through Instagram and watching stories. It's my form so of Ryan, entertainment. So, Ryan, when I'm on a break at work, yeah. I go for coffee with my coworkers and we have a laugh. I don't sit on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Um, now, I also have a question, though. Sorry, we're just ripping Ryan. Hart. I know. <laughs> <laughs> High five. Oh. They're high-fiving. Wow. Okay, I see so, how this is. But this is, like, if you're not following anyone, it's still going to slightly tailor, right? Like, let's say you're constantly looking up photography, for example. It's still going to, that's going to be, like, the suggested yeah, post, right? Yeah, you see right? suggested posts? No, or it's just completely She's blank, no. like, blank slate. So all it does is, and I can even show you guys, too. All it does is show my posts and sponsored posts. Nothing else. So for so me, all you see is ads in your posts. No, because the problem is I right now don't have so many posts that if I see an ad, it's maybe one. It's it's oh, it's honestly it's it's been a really interesting concept. That's for sure. Instagram probably reminds you all the time to follow people. Oh, they for, probably want you to th- follow people. There's suggested followers, yeah. and you know, there's all of that. I wonder if we're gonna hear the. Yeah, ice. we're probably gonna hear it. Katie is. <laughs> Katie is. Here, this is maybe a good water. segue for me to get. Katie, if you hear that in the background, Katie's just getting us nice ice water. Now, Ivana, what I want to ask you about this, though, is with your cleanse, yep. were you anxious at first? Because I okay. feel like there's so many times where I want to just deactivate Instagram. But then it's like, I don't know, it's kind of like, you know, maybe when you're on your phone, you're now like, well, what do I do? Because I'm so used to going right on my phone yeah. and scrolling. You oh, know? I'll, I'll give you the real, the realness of what my my progress was because right now it's October and I've been kind of deactivated with my personal account so when I first deactivated my account I actually deleted the app completely off of my phone and I had that for about two weeks and I'll tell you right now it was very very scary yeah because wow very very scary Look at me, I'm just rhyming now. You're a poet they were and you... very scary. Yeah. yeah. They were very scary. <laughs> and it's just in time for Halloween. Ooh. Ooh. Is this time for the social media bit? <laughs> oh. We can do it after. Yeah. Okay. We'll do it at the end. Um, okay, so Cole's notes. When you first deactivate, um, I feel like I'm part of a AA meeting right now, kind of telling <laughs> you about my, 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 my experience. But, you know what? Um, I think one day, I'm calling this right now, and you guys can call Ryan me Ryan Dirty prophecy. has food in his <laughs> mouth. I repeat, he Sorry. is munching I on a broccoli. In my mouth. I think you guys. <laughs> they both just love ripping me apart and judging me. Um, I'm, you guys can call me a prophecy, but I think one day there will be like a social media social media anonymous or something maybe not like that but I there will be probably already but there'll is. be groups yeah. for addictions yeah. because like even my dad like 
he is always on his phone. Like, he posts more than I do. And, like, oh, our yeah. family will, like, fight over the exclusive. If we take, like, a fire family picture. I know. You've told me this It's before. literally, like, yeah, well, who gets crazy. the exclusive? Who that, gets the post I've first? never heard of that. Never. It's true. <laughs> that's, <We're> like, like, <laughs> that's, like, very elite <laughs> and strange. But, no, I honestly completely agree with you how it will be tailored or, like, what it will be called. But people that have been so addicted to uh, their phone, social media, that maybe they've lost relationships in their lives yeah. or yeah. like if I was dating somebody that was on their phone the whole time and oh, physically right. couldn't yeah. put it yes. down they wouldn't be my partner anymore if we want to like I love to go out right like dinners and, yeah. and like just do th- can't do things. stand that when they have their phone on the no. table no but that it, it, it. it is an addiction I how many people times do you put your phone down yeah and you lock it yeah and without even sometimes noticing, again, going to that autopilot we were talking about, you all of a sudden you're on, you're on your phone again. Yeah. I did that like nine times on the treadmill this morning. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I'm back on it. Like, I mean, because I was just speed walking. I can do that. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Just kind of like, whoa, like I actually, I, I have my headphones and I'm watching what's on the TV. I don't have a notification. There's nothing to open. I actually don't want to be on my phone. I like this show. And I've just unlocked it again. But just a side note before Ivana tells us the steps to breaking our social media addiction from her from her uh, perspective, I call people out when I'm out with a friend at dinner and they have their phone on the table and they're like constantly checking, especially if it's a close friend. If it's just like someone you're meeting for the first time or acquaintance, you're kind of just judging in your head. But I will call people out and be like, oh, like is there something like is something going on or something like that and they're like oh, no no no, i'm I sorry can't like stand nothing. it i'll make it, people like, feel awkward well because it's like we're here in person like talk to me it's for half an hour an yeah. hour sorry if something happens or if there's an emergency then yeah i understand but like or when you go to the bathroom check your phone yeah i just I, it's kind of like a turn off for friends and dating if they're on their phone at the dinner table or have it out and things are popping up and like they're looking at it it's just Absolutely. like put your phone in your pocket you know what you know the kind of concept of people watching i don't know if you yeah. two are fans but yes. oh, 100%. working yeah. in the hospitality industry it's like the perfect view of people watching mm-hmm. you get to watch first dates yeah fights uh fights. uh new cup like couples with young kids um like old couples we have this couple that comes in where i work and they've been married 65 years oh so you get to do a lot of people watching and it is very interesting us being millennials we get ragged on enough but yeah. even the generation slightly younger than us Five girls get together, let's say, or five guys get together. They've they're paying to be out. They've taken the time to get to this establishment, and they're all on their phones. Yeah, I get if you're like sharing photos or something, or like having a, a de- Google debates. So you're all bringing out your phones or whatever. But why would you take the time out of your day to meet yeah. up with people to all be on your phone seeing what other people are doing? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't get that. This is, I guess, a good segue um, because you know how you were just talking about that feeling of you're at the gym and you put your phone down and then you you pick it up and then you think, oh, what happened there? That's exactly what you go through when you first kind of just go cold turkey. Because in the first two weeks that I deleted the app, I caught myself, whether it be at my desk or on the train or at home, wherever it was, I would pick up my phone and I would go to the folder that the app was there and then I realized, oh, it's not there. Okay, you know, and I would yeah. trip out because yeah. my brain, without even thinking about it, would just go to that folder. So you kind of go through this purge for the first two weeks of, okay, this is an addiction because yeah. I'm, I'm just inherently going to that folder. And then, you know, you kind of start fizzling out of it. And then you, you almost, in a sense, just stop going because it's not there. Yeah. But what was interesting is I wanted to test and see when I brought the app back because obviously I wanted to have my um, my art account back. So I brought the app back and even just for three weeks not having it, I found myself going on it less. Interesting. It was really, it was, I felt so proud of myself yeah. because the only time I would go on it was when I had a, a picture in mind that I wanted to post something from my art and I would just go to it and it felt so good to know, oh, you know, I'm not just kind of, you know, not thinking about this anymore. I actually consciously thought I need to go and post something on my account. Yeah. For the better of your art and your account and, you know, your business, I guess, and to an extent. But that, and I, I totally find that very interesting, not having it, then when you rehab it, using it a lot less. Yeah. Because it's so, like, I mean, I understand, let's say Twitter. 
you open Twitter in the morning or whatever, and yeah. you've got lots to go through. And like, you know, I don't know about your Twitter feed, but I have, like, I guess almost like Instagram, but I follow a lot more news yeah. on Twitter. So that's kind of cool if I've been sleeping for eight hours. But, and I don't do this often, but then sometimes I'll reopen it three minutes later. Yeah. Not that much has changed. Yeah. Not that much should change. Put your phone down. Have you heard about the saying about how uh, social media now is like the modern day fridge? How, you know, when you go back to the fridge and you you go and there's nothing really to eat. And then you go back five minutes later and you're still looking if there's anything else to eat. Don't worry, fridge. I still love you. Yeah, no, no. We still love our fridge. (laughs) I still go to that fridge. We go to that fridge. (laughs) With my phone in my hand. (laughs) No, but it's, it's so true because everyone is just so... I'll give you a perfect example. Yeah. Now that I've kind of taken out Instagram, another app that I actually completely just deleted off my phone was Snapchat. You know, any photo sharing app, I haven't really been so in tune with. You know, the only only apps that I'll ever go on now is I would say Twitter for news and then also Reddit. I became such a huge Reddit person, but even I had to scale it back a bit because I was just going and yeah. Reddit has so much information that I would kind of take a step back because I was overcompensating at the fact that I didn't have the other yeah. social profiles. Yeah. Well, that's a perfect segue, Ivana, about we were going to talk about Reddit and this one account. Yeah. But before we do that, yeah, I, I, I need you to refresh me with Reddit because when I, let's say I Google something, sometimes like the option of Reddit will come up, like yeah. if I ask maybe a, a cooking question or something. And then it just seems like, 2000s like there's just a bunch of writing and it's all like together and like just random people and i'm like i don't get it i don't get it okay so i for the longest time didn't get it either until you just you kind of just have to go on the app and you just learn so essentially what what it is it's more community based yeah so you have your post but the post is just a trigger to the comments and the community that follows the subreddits and then right? you can upvote things too so it's it's a system it's a system where it's not about how many followers you have no. it's not about how many likes you have no. it's about okay here's so one there's a subreddit that's it's called wholesome so it's it's really you know uplifting whether it's a post whether it's a photo of someone doing something good you know the other day I saw a photo of um, a man helping an older lady cross the street so that's a wholesome thing so people upvote it because you know they want to spread that so it moves up to the top page like maybe let's just say there's eight pages I'm sure there's plenty plenty more but if there's eight pages within that subreddit the more people that upvote it the likelihood it's going to be on that first page at that top post exactly so it's a good point the way I want to explain it because it's not really based on the followers it's about your content yeah so your content is good it's going to make its way to the top. And same with the comments, I think, yeah. as well, right? Well, it's just funny, too, because I don't know about you guys, but in some of my uh, friend group chats, we actually use Reddit lingo. So someone will say something in the chat, and then whether it's funny or whatever, and this is specific in WhatsApp, you will the group will just upvote it. And oh. it's, it's, it's a really fun way of kind of bringing that in and, you know... I just want to say before we get into this this uh, subreddit that Ivana was going to talk to us about, what I've realized because we were talking about people going out and going out to dinners with friends and things, I've started to realize that you don't have to post everything. And I know that I've always been someone that does post a lot and people probably think that I post everything, but there's so many times that I go out for drinks with someone and now I'm not posting something right there because I'm kind of like, let's live in the moment. Let's enjoy this. Let's create memories. Maybe even let's take a selfie together but not post it And I my think own it's memories. Also like, and it feels so good. If you think about it though, why do why do we post everything? I get if you, you're you gone away yeah. and you're in a really cool place or anything like that, but like, why do your followers need to know that you grab drinks with Ronnie yep. at a Kelsey's on Tuesday to show that you're socially active? Yeah. Like you, you have friends yeah. you, or, or, yeah. the, or that you yeah. go out in the, uh, in the weekday yeah. or that you're spontaneous. Like I'm not just at home. I, I'm out. You know, you think yeah. like, is it to prove to yourself or to prove to others? And then there's, you know, I'm in Paris. Look how cool this exactly, is. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
I would say, yeah, to, to go on your point, I think you guys even touched on that in one of your episodes about the millennial traveler and kind of showing off all these things. I love that things. episode. Oh, trust me, it's guys. A I'm a I'm a avid fan. I listen to every episode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, so I think it's, it's a lot about the clout of, oh, look it, I'm out, I'm having fun, when meanwhile, you, you know, you don't know what that person's going through. Um, but what I was going to say uh, to kind of, I guess, close this off before we go to the next thing is ever since I... I really kind of took that step back with social media. I have more memories in my brain than in my phone. Wow. I go to concerts That's a good way to and, put it. and I and I remember things because, you know, sure, I'll be shameless and I'll take a photo to be, you know, to remember the moment. Yeah. Or if, you know, for example, I went to Tame Impala this past summer nice. and I took a few videos, but I stopped looking at how it would look on the tiny screen and I took it because I wanted to have that song forever yeah. as yeah. a memory. But I remember the concert. I'm getting shivers even thinking about yeah. the concert. It was amazing. Well, they're awesome. Um, but, you know, every place you go to now, it almost seems that everyone has their own angle. I almost want to do a social experiment now and ask people to go to a room and have all these different angles and kind of put it all together to see how it looks like. Because you, you just see at concerts now, it's a shame, a sea of phones. And yeah. everyone is just, they're not even paying attention to this. Yeah. They're looking up and just kind of staring to see, oh, how's that angle looking? And it's it's sad. It's sad it because is. do you remember the concert or is your phone living in that concert, you know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, Ivana, to wrap things up, I wanted uh, you to talk about this subreddit specifically. I can't remember what it's called, but I remember you telling me about it, and I have my opinions on it. We've talked to Katie a bit about it. She has some opinions on it. So tell us a little bit about this subreddit. What is it called? What it's about? Okay. We're not sponsored by Reddit, by the way. No. But if you do want to sponsor <laughs> yeah. us, give us a shout. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so there's a subreddit called Instagram Reality. What it is, it's a community that people post photos where girls, guys, everyone, it's not just particular to one gender, yeah. everyone. Yeah. They call them out for their overuse of editing, their, their, their filter usage, you know, warping their bodies to kind of have this Kardashian-esque um, physique. And really, the whole purpose of the community is to just give awareness that if you follow these people and they're doing hashtag no filter, hashtag au naturel, well, no, you see the little Photoshop glitch that they kind of didn't smooth out. And there's some se. rules with this this sub. So you community, can't right? call out who the person is. You can't be mean. It's it's the community is not there to you know on you which I feel a lot of people think that's what it is but it's really just about creating awareness of okay you may follow this person and you may know who this person is but people see that they're over editing their photos and they're trying to give this you know perfect body this perfect ideal when really it's facetune and photoshop okay quickly I just have one question um in terms of what can be said on there you you said that the point of it is not to shame and that it's more of a community instagram is now you know building um the ability to kind of as much as they can stop online bullying yeah. uh be able to filter some words some comments so that people can't be totally cyber bullied yeah is there a system in place with that on reddit or is it more just an understanding that like this is a safe space so I actually just pulled it up right now. On every post, there's an auto moderator and it says, you know, welcome to the community. There's three rules. No revealing or requesting personal info. Names, usernames, revealing hashtags are not allowed under any circumstances. Be civil. We're not a hate sub or any slurs or nastiness towards anyone. Um, if, if you are um, hating on someone, then they'll ban you from the the community and then the third one is no sexual comments so no disrespect no disrespectful vulgar comments uh the, they're all going to be removed and also will result in a ban okay well fair enough i personally i'm going to take a strong stance on this and you show me some pictures from this subreddit i think that inherently that this is a form of bullying because yes i do agree that we need education out there that shows that there's all these apps that people can manipulate their body there's apps you can add i think like abs to your stomach and things like that it's crazy now i mean obviously photoshop you could do that before but now you can do it with the touch of a button on a mobile app however 
I think that education needs to be there. But if someone is uncomfortable with maybe a blemish on their skin or with their weight and they do want to adjust it a little bit, why are we creating a community where we're calling people out on that? I just don't agree with that. And as much as you won't, you may not be able to put usernames, well, what about the 500 people that follow that person in that small town that goes on the subreddit and then sees that person and then maybe they didn't realize that that person edited out um, an acne scar or something like that, you know? So I personally, I don't agree with it. So everyone has blemishes and it's yeah. okay if you want you know, I remember you would take a photo in, in elementary school and if you had a little blemish, they, there was the option for removing acne. Yeah, yeah, That's fine. What this community is doing is it's educating people who not who aren't necessarily educated in what Facetune is, in what Photoshop is. And let's say, for example, this person... But why are person, we educating people by calling other people out that don't want to be called out? Because it's making people want to get plastic surgery. It's making people... Fair enough. You know, it's no, making no, them agree. so insecure. But these people, a lot of these people that are on there, they're not all influencers or celebrities, right? These Some of these people are normal, everyday people, would you say? I would say it's a whole it's a whole range. I mean, personally, again, you can't see who the person is. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's really all it is 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 it's it's just supposed to educate you to be like, listen, it's okay because sometimes they'll bring in people who actually you know have their blemishes and have their scars and have you know cellulite and all of that, and it's showing real people. Oh, they come in too. Yeah, they do. That's good. Yeah, so that's why I mean the community is just there. So that you can just see and know that it is okay if you don't have an hourglass figure. It is okay yeah. if you don't have, you know, that perfect body. Which is a good don't message morph, to send. You know, like that's essentially yeah. what it's trying to do. It's, I it's just not think there's about... a different means to doing it okay, in my okay. opinion, you know. Here comes a moderator, Katie. No, well, <laughs> actually, this is interesting because I really do sit in between both opinions. I yeah. totally hear the both of them. And... <laughs> Honestly, I, I do really get it. It's exposing the sense of what you see is necessarily not the truth. And these, especially, it is one thing if there's a, a girl that's maybe just like editing her photos a, a little bit and maybe not doing it all so well. And then there's these influencers that are making a lot of money based off their bodies that aren't real and there is like an extreme amount of content and it's always you know in the nicest places in the nicest clothes in the best positions with the most perfect bodies that i do believe um everyday people need to really be educated that that is not you don't you're okay that you're not in cabo with the world's best body but then there is the other side of we can just have these conversations. We may not need to have this online community that's like, check out how much she face tuned her nose. Yeah. And like, come on, nobody's hourglass is that tight. Look at the little like Photoshop air down by the ankle. And like, can you like Kim <laughs> Kardashian and stuff gets a lot of that as well. So I sit, um, I don't think it's like, the most important what like site, but I don't think it needs to be taken down either. If, if that yeah. makes sense, like I'm totally okay either way. Like, which which I, I get, get it. and I can be in between too. Like I think the sentiment I agree with Ivana. I think that the the one of the rules that should be on there is that it's only people with X amount of followers and above that can be posted. Yes, they're not going to post their username, but I think influencers and celebrities should be called out because. They have such a following and people look at them and they're like, well, if I don't look like that, I can't be famous. Meanwhile, in real life, they may not look like that. I'm just worried about the girl in Maryland. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know where that is. Poor girl. We're hoping hoping you're okay. Yeah, like I don't want her to get posted on there. what you do to this girl? No, I'm just saying like, you know, this poor girl in Maryland, 12th grade, she's about to go to prom for the first time and someone posts her Photoshop or face to an error. That's what I would be worried about. That's where I agree with you. If you're one of those influencers that has an insane yeah. amount of followers and every photo you just look like an absolute legend of a person then I get it. it's like yeah. hey guys just let you know this isn't reality and exactly. then there's the girl from Maryland yeah. that doesn't know how to work Photoshop that well <laughs> Yeah, like, she screwed up a bit to be honest now that I'm kind of remembering what the feed is it's not necessarily geared towards oh here's this girl from Maryland let me put her photo okay, well, that's good. most of the time when you see and because some Sometimes I'll even read the comments for some of these photos. Yeah. I think a lot of the times it's it's targeting these big influencers. Okay. okay. Who are, that makes who more sense. Sorry, I to, misunderstood what yeah, this yeah, Reddit no, is about. Because the thing is, it's it, it isn't a place of, okay, let me just put this picture. Because that almost 
that almost makes me remind uh, of you know the website the dirty. Oh, where they like call people. Yeah, out that's and show okay. That I don't agree with. That no. is just pure bullying and kind of you know. Let me just post. What is it film. about again? Uh, we're not gonna get into no? this okay. today. <laughs> is it like with exes or something? It's just a very, very not. No, Great I can't, place. I, I can't okay. even like think. Of, no, I want to say a funny story before we wrap things up. Uh, I remember in, when I was like 12. Remember, Were you in Maryland? No, I wasn't in Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> Avon almost spit out her coffee. Uh, I right was, on your computer. That I was, was. Hey, you took that awful screen protector <laughs> thing off. I just it was realized. a keyboard protector. I was like, oh Stop. my God, what happened to your laptop? <laughs> I was so worried because his laptop Stop. was new. He's like, oh, it's a keyboard protector. I was like, this is the stupidest thing I've because, ever seen. No, it was, it was a white keyboard protector, but it had flowers on it, but the flowers looked like spilled ink. So it looked like ink had spilled over my computer, but I got Did it for free. Did the girl from Maryland get, get that for No, you? I got it for free from a girl because I don't think... She said it didn't Maryland, fit, but I don't right? know if she liked it. She couldn't sell it to anyone. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so mean. Okay, so, no, no, I love you guys. They just high-fived again. Um, I remember I was like 12 in Toronto, and you remember Paint? Remember oh, Paint, yeah. the like Microsoft Paint? So I had a picture oh, of myself. Rest in peace. They, 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 did they, they stopped? Yeah, it's done. Wow. Yeah, rest in That's peace, sad. Paint. We miss you. Well, there's so many like apps now that like kids can use to like draw and know, use like their iPad. And... I know. Paint's OG. So I I had this picture of myself and I thought that I looked very round in it. So I put a you know you could do like blocks of white. I put a block of like a white square in front of my stomach so that I looked thinner. But it was so obvious. It was like literally like my stomach was just like a square. <laughs> Any and I, any any hackers out there? Please, oh, send us the picture. Uh, yeah, please send us the photo if you can. It was when you could like make your own website. There were like those like little like so. yeah, something like that. And I posted it on there, and like people were like commenting on it and like calling me out and stuff. Oh, so this is like near and dear to your heart. I was like OG, like this Instagram reality. I <laughs> created it. No, I mean I didn't create it. It was created because of me. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. But Ryan, you're such a trendsetter. <laughs> At the end of the day, though, like. Like, in all respect, for the most part, when people, I am not saying, sorry, I just hit Ivana. I am not saying that, like, people should wear makeup for boys or, you know what I mean? Or buy high heels to look sexy to other people. You know, we should do that for ourselves. But a lot of the time, we do, you know, work on some of the things that we don't necessarily like. Not for everyone and not to drastic points. So calling people out on that is quite horrible, you know? Like, it's... Bad, bad example, but I've always been a, a hair extension lover. I've had them taped in. I've had them glued in. I've had expensive clip-ins to really embarrassing, not matching ones. And there's nothing worse than spending a few thousand dollars to put hair extensions in because maybe you hate that your hair. much? If you're getting them taped in or wow. something professionally. But let's say like I'm really self-conscious of my hair or another girl and I spend all this money to uh, get them professionally done or I spend all the money I've saved up to get clip-ins. And then people comment, oh, nice extensions or whatever. It's It diminishes what you're trying to accomplish. You know, yeah. if someone feels like they have kind of yellow teeth, um, maybe they've always had that. And so they get them whitened and then people like, you know, call them out for that. It's it Whether it's not trying to be bullying or horrible, it is because, hey, I've purposely worked on this for yeah. my own reasons. I don't really need to be publicly or personally shamed over it. Fair enough. I, I'll leave it with this because I know we're wrapping up. If you want hair extensions because it makes you feel good, do it. If you want to put on high heels, whatever, do it. If you don't want to wear makeup and go out, do it. No one should tell you or stop you from being who you want to be. Be who you want to be. Love yourself. Don't care about what other people think about you. The moment that you, you know, kind of create this mantra in your head... You will you will feel so much better about yourself. And I know it's so cliche because we hear this all the time, but I'm going to repeat it again. Don't care what other people think about you. Just stop doing it. Honestly, just wow. don't. There we go. Ivana, I just need to call you up whenever I'm feeling and we'll conference you Katie. You already in. do. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think like he isn't doing that already. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, facts. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Same. Bang. <laughs>
Well, you really know it. I love she that. She knows it. I she know knows it. the theme song. So, uh, Katie, you want to start us off? Okay, absolutely. My Twitter is 01KatieJones, and my Instagram is E Jones. Miss Ivana, you only have the one Instagram account for your art, but uh, let them know what that is. All right. So, if you want to keep in touch, reach out, you know, get some advice, or just have a laugh, um... My Instagram is at V-A-N-K-S-C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E. <laughs> she did this last time too. She spread out completely. It's V-A-N-K-S, so Vanks. Vanks Creative. Creative. <laughs> yes, Katie just I'm died laughing. <laughs> I know. I have to do that. I'm on No, no, no. Let's keep it. <laughs> so it's Vanks Creative. Okay. V-A-N-K-S. Vanks, Vanks Creative. Okay. okay. Yes. Done. And mine is at Ryan Durgy on Twitter and Instagram, R Y A N D U R G Y. And our Instagram for the podcast. I, I tried <laughs> doing that, but I actually sound like I'm spelling the alphabet. I know. A B C D E F G. Oh. It's because I'm looking in the distance and I'm seeing my, my name visually. <laughs> okay, uh, well. And our, wait, our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> our podcast Instagram is. Is this adulthood? And our Twitter is ITA underscore podcast. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are dying. I don't think they're ever going to be able to do a social media bit ever again. <laughs> All right, love you guys. Thanks for listening. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, oh, right. This I'm, episode has been all about this. <laughs> Eat <a> chips. <laughs> Bye. Mm.